Well guys, it finally happened. My baby is no longer a baby. I'm a real mom that buys diapers now. Where does the time go? Look at that, my baby went into heat. Well, with that being said, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna be talking about what it's like when your dog goes into heat. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. I have two golden retrievers named Larcy and Koba J. This is Koba J and she is now a woman. So this is my first time dealing with a dog going into heat, so I just wanted to share my experience so that way hopefully it'll make you feel a little bit more prepared if you end up having to go through it and just share what's kind of worked for us and how we actually ended up finding out that she was in heat. So I would say September 26th on a Sunday is when we first noticed that things were a little bit different than normal. So at this point, Koba J was nine months old and my husband had noticed that whenever she was going outside to go pee that there was this straw-like mucousy substance that was coming out, which I never noticed this, I never saw this, but he kept mentioning that it was really strange and we were thinking like, oh my gosh, does she have some infection? What is this? And then Monday comes. I get home from work and Koba is just acting strange. Like she's acting like she's upset, like she's in trouble, she's being very submissive, and she's being very needy and very whiny. Like she kept wanting to lay on my chest and snuggle me as if she were like a real life baby, like literally snuggling me. So I kept trying to snuggle her and snuggle her and snuggle her. I thought maybe, you know, her belly just hurt. She didn't feel good. So I was trying to rub her belly. And anytime I got up, to do anything else, she would cry, she would whine, she would make a big fuss about it. She'd go and she'd play with Larcy for a few minutes and then all of a sudden she started getting whiny again and wanted attention and I could not figure out for the life of me why she was being so freaking needy. I mean, she naturally is a mommy's girl, she is very attached to me, but this was very much over the top. So then Tuesday comes and we wake up in the morning and my husband notices that there is a little blood stain on the sheet on the bed and that's kind of how we were like oh boy she's probably going into heat so we ended up going and buying some diapers we didn't really know what size to get her so we just kind of guesstimated so we ended up getting a pack of the medium size and the large size i wasn't sure how many diapers we were gonna need or end up having to go through, but I figured let's just start with these two. And if we have to get more, then we'll end up getting more. If we don't use them all, we'll just donate what we don't use. So we tried putting on just the regular disposable diapers and she would like suck her butt in when she was walking because I just think she wasn't used to it and she didn't really like having them on. And then she would shake her butt and try to wiggle them off, which at first she was pretty good at actually doing that. So then we're like, okay, we're gonna need to do something a little bit more to actually get these diapers to stay. You see how needy these girls are? If I'm not petting them, they get upset. Ready? Watch. So anyways, I end up going to a different store the next day and I just tell them the situation. I already bought all these diapers. We already opened them. What should I do? And they suggested that I buy the reusable ones that you can wash. So I ended up buying a two pack of those. These are the reusable ones that I got and these are the disposable ones that we got. I wasn't sure again what size to get so I just went with the extra large size because that's what they suggested for her breed, her age, her size. And they're definitely too big, which is okay. It's not the end of the world. We made it work. I just have to Velcro them on the opposite sides versus the sides that they're actually supposed to Velcro to. My initial thought was to put it over top of their regular diapers to actually get them to stay on, but instead I found out that what helps a lot is taping it. So if the diaper is A, falling off or just keeps coming unattached, we just put some tape over it to tape it all still and it holds up just fine. She's able to run around. She's able to play she can do stairs, she can jump, and the diaper stays. Works perfect, works like a charm. So at first with her getting used to the diapers, I was having her wear a cone at night just so that way she wouldn't end up taking it off or shaking it off or eating it, whatever, in the middle of the night. Because the first night we noticed halfway through the night, I woke up and the diaper was 
laying in the middle of the bed and she was elsewhere. So I wanted to make sure she wasn't going to mess with it. Same thing while we were gone. I make her wear a cone as well just because I don't want her to eat it or something while I'm at work. So this is our experience so far. We are on day 12. It is Friday, October 8th. I haven't really noticed any other like major changes with her. She's still being needy, but I would say not anything super more significant than she already was before. She's not doing the crying. She's not doing the whining. She's not, I feel like acting any more hungry than she normally is or acting like she doesn't want to eat food because she definitely wants to still eat her food. She's not being really aggressive with Larcy. I don't see her being mean to her at all. I don't see her being standoffish towards her. I would say right now we're probably going through four diapers a day. So just keep that in mind. And I looked up how long the heat cycle should actually be. And it says that it usually lasts for a week and a half to two weeks. Hoba is now 10 months old. She actually turned 10 months old a week into her being in heat. As far as the bleeding, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but you can definitely tell. <laughs> there has been times in the beginning where we wanted to just let her be free and kind of not wear the diaper 24 seven and we couldn't get away with it because she just had little spots of blood, a little trail of blood every single time we tried to do that. So it just did not work out. And then as far as the diapers, they're expensive. The pack of diapers that we got, I think we spent $15 on each of the packets and there's only 12 diapers in here. And as far as the reusable ones go, I'm pretty sure these were like $24 for two of them. So if you're planning to go through more than one heat cycle, I would definitely suggest getting more of the reusable diapers because I'm literally doing laundry every single day. I also noticed that her vulva is very swollen. As soon as my husband said that there was blood on the bed, that is the first thing that I checked. I wasn't really sure what I should do as far as keeping it clean because I can't imagine that not cleaning it all is a good thing, but I also can't imagine that cleaning it constantly is a good thing either because I don't want to irritate anything. I don't want to cause an infection and we have been cleaning it... <laughs> No, she's the center of attention. This is my life. So we ended up deciding to just clean it up with the puppy wipes every other day, just so that way we're keeping it clean, we're keeping it sanitized, but we're not overdoing it. And then I just make sure that the fur around it is combed so that way she doesn't get all matted and knotted. Her tail position, that's another thing that I noticed with her. She keeps her tail down and really close to her body. So it's like this with a little tiny curve at the end. And then whenever she's like on her back, she curls it up over top of her between her legs, which is kind of difficult because then she gets blood on it. So whenever I'm changing her diaper or whenever I am cleaning up around her, I always have to hold her tail down. Otherwise she will curl it up and she'll keep getting blood on her tail. And then also just checking like her booty fluke can get on the hair around there. So whenever I put her diapers on, I just make sure that the coverage wise, it's all poofed out as far as I can get it. I don't feel like Larcy acts any different around Copa either. I mean, she definitely smells her, I feel like a lot more and she's kind of curious about about the diaper and what's going on. But again, same thing with her. I don't see any like aggression. All right, so today is October 13th and she's still bleeding. We're still going through diapers. We actually have gone through almost three 12 pack of diapers now. I think we only have two in the pack left. So definitely the bleeding portion is lasting a lot longer than I was expecting. I thought that the bleeding would only last like a week and a half to two weeks as what Google said. But yeah, we're still, we're still going strong. We did have a bit of an incident earlier this week. So today is Wednesday and on Monday, on the 11th, I came home from work at lunchtime, which I always do, and I feed them and take them out. I go to grab Koba and her diaper is not on and I see a bunch of little tiny pieces of her diaper in the crate. My heart sank. I was freaking out. Like she ate a pretty good portion of the diaper. She didn't eat any of the tape that we were using to help keep it on, which is good. I immediately called the vet because I Googled it and it was like, call the vet immediately. Like the toxins can be fatal and I'm like, freaking out, freaking out, you know, obviously expecting the worst. Can't get a hold of the vet because they were also at lunch and finally I get a hold of them while I was at work and I'm like literally panicking. Like if there's something wrong with my babies, I can't function, like I can't focus, like I just, 
I need to fix it. They're way too important to me, you know? Like there's nothing in my world that is gonna be more important to me in those moments than making sure that they're gonna be okay. Finally get to talk to the doctor. He calls me and I sent him pictures of everything and he didn't seem too concerned. I sent him a picture of what the diaper is supposed to look like and how much was actually left. He said, just watch her for the next couple of days and make sure that, you know, she doesn't have any trouble breathing, make sure she doesn't start vomiting and make sure that she's able to actually go to the bathroom Room. He said she should pass it. The only concern that he had is, you know, causing some sort of obstruction. And I mean, we're two days past that now. And thankfully, she has been passing it little by little. Thank gosh, it's been going well. But that was like our biggest fear was her eating one of her diapers. And she even had her donut on in the crate whenever she got the diaper off and ate it. So it had to have just slid off. I don't know how else she would have been able to get that diaper off. But yeah, so that was terrifying. So after that, I put her back in the crate when I go back to work. I put the reusable one on her, the fabric ones, and same thing, put the donut back on. My husband comes home from work because he gets home sooner than I do on Mondays. And he said, look at her all smiling. You guys be not smiley. Mommy's freaking out. Yeah, see, I didn't do that. He comes home and he said that the diaper was off again. She didn't eat the diaper, thank gosh, but it was off. So I just said, you know what? Screw it. Like, I'm not going to keep playing this game. I'm not going to risk her eating another diaper. I would rather just have her lick it to death. Like, obviously, I don't want her to lick it. I don't want to get infected, but I don't want her to eat a freaking diaper. Like, I, I feel like that's worse. The next day, I just took a black towel. I put it on the little crate mat of her crate, and I took out her blankie. I took out her puppy, like, anything that could get dirty, and I just gave her some of, like, her rubber chew toys to hopefully, like, distract her instead of sitting there and licking it all day. And I'm sure she did because I can smell it on her breath. TMI, but that's what it is. And then I've just been putting a diaper on her for the time being while I'm home for lunch and then obviously while we're home you know, for the day, of course at night, but never while she is by herself anymore. So this is the donut. This is what I'm talking about. This is what we got Larcy when she got spayed. I also had this cone that she wore at first, but as you can see, she um, chewed it. So that's why I said, screw it, I'll just use the donut. And she could still reach it with a donut, but I just thought that maybe it would make it a little bit more difficult enough to the point where she want to do it less, I guess. I have noticed that her nipples are really swollen and they're really red. And I feel like they're really sensitive because before I feel like she would roll over on her back and want me to like rub her belly and I was doing that and now when I do that she kind of like sucks in her belly a little bit so I feel like it's a little tender if I rub my hand over top of them. Other than that I haven't really noticed much about her. She's been doing good but that's uh, the current update on Koba being in heat. Look how cute she is with her diaper on. Like I said we're at the end of pack three and that's with using the reusable one in between. I've just been trying not to use it as much because she does have a little tear in the side of it so it doesn't stay super secure anymore. It is now October 16th and I just went to clean her up and it looks really really clean. It looks really good. The swelling has gone down a ton. Hun. There's like barely any bleeding at all, which is good. So I think we are finally getting to the end of it. Her nipples are still really red and swollen. What do you think? Are you sick of diapers? We ended up going through three packs of disposable diapers and then honestly I just stopped buying them and we just started using just strictly the reusable ones which is fine but because we only have two we're literally constantly washing them and you can't dry them so they have to hang dry. If anyone is interested in size reference, Cobalt's 46 pounds. These were a little bit too big but the large diapers were perfect. So now today is October 19th. Apparently I wasn't right in thinking that her bleeding was going to be done because we ended up leaving her diaper off and I woke up the next day after we were done sleeping. There's a bunch of blood spots all over the bed. So, so much for that. The next day we put some diapers on our grocery order. I ordered two packs of large diapers from PetSmart, which I haven't gotten her diapers before, so I thought it would be fine. What's the difference, you know? Our order comes and I put the diapers on and I'm like, these diapers just are not, like, they're not really nice quality and they just seem tight. They seem a lot smaller than what we were getting. I was like, well, let me look at the packaging and just see if like the sizing is different because you know with humans you know there's you could be a large in this brand but then a small in this one or whatever. The diapers that we were getting before were like 13 to 21 inches and then I go over to look at this package. Let me show you what it says. This package says small for 8 to 15 pounds. So instead of getting the large diapers that we ordered we got two 12 packs of small diapers. So that explains it. 
And whenever she had them on, she kind of had to like waddle when she walked because it just sat on her so low. If she didn't have a tail, it would have just literally slid right off. But I did notice that for the last day, when we were changing her diaper, there wasn't really anything on it at all. Like it looked pretty clean. I don't know, I'm hopeful that it's the end finally. I guess we'll see. I'm gonna take these diapers to PetSmart today because I'm gonna go there for Larcy's birthday anyways. And I will see what I can do. I asked for a refund on DoorDash and they refunded me like $22 and it was 52, so that's cool. It is now Friday, October 22nd, and I think it's been four days since Koba has bled. I still have a little over a half pack of these small diapers left that I'm going to uh, give to another dog mom that I know who's puppy is probably going to go into heat pretty soon so hopefully she's able to use them but I was able to return the other pack of small diapers that I got and I just got some store credit which was fine because I took Larcy there for her birthday so we picked something out worked out perfect I just looked at Koba again and the swelling has gone down I think completely she looks back to normal her nipples are starting to go back to normal they're still a little swollen and red but those even look a lot better she's I feel like being a little less neat than she was being at the beginning and yesterday I noticed something. I was just sitting here editing on my computer and I look over and she was humping Larcy. I have never seen Koba hump Larcy. I've never even seen her like attempt to or try to. So yeah, I think we are in the clear now and um, hopefully that's it. Her spay is a month away and hopefully everything is able to be on track for that and we don't have to reschedule anything but whatever it is what it is and um yeah that was our first experience with our gold retriever going into heat i don't really know what i was expecting but i'm not sad that it is over so hopefully this vlog was able to give you some insight on what it might be like when your dog goes into heat especially their first heat cycle especially if you have a golden retriever because i wish that I would have had a video like this for me to watch to know what to do with Koba. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, we will see you guys in our next video. Bye guys.